Welcome back to Switch to Linux. We have a special edition today. Uh, somebody in my comments, um, and that was... Impertinent Human lent me a uh, review from uh, a fairly new channel called TFIR, um, a video called Why I Don't Recommend Linux Mint. And he is spends this entire 10 minute video talking about one issue that doesn't actually exist. Uh, we're gonna have a look at what he has to say and talk about what he got wrong about Linux Mint. And again, this in this world, you know, this Linux world, there's a lot of people hostile towards Linux Mint, and I really don't know why. Particularly since we actually tend to very, very much agree on some basic premise. So I'm going to go ahead and link. I'm going to link talk about three different videos here. I'm going to go ahead and put those down in the uh, description. But listen to why he uses. Um, a Linux system or any system for that matter. So when I come and sit on my laptop or my desktop, I want to fire up the browser, I want to fire up the word processor, I want to fire up the image or video editing software and start doing my work, close the laptop and go and do something else. I don't. Okay, so um, we agree. He and I completely agree. When I go to use my computer, I actually want to turn it on, I want it to work, I want it to do what I want it to do, and I want to not have to sit there and worry about is the wireless going to work, is the system going to not boot, is it going to have a lot of issues, a lot of challenges, a lot of problems. This is why I use Debian based systems because they have stability at their core. Now if I always wanted or needed the latest versions of the latest applications, I would use something more in the arch world. There are valid reasons to use either. He and I completely, completely agree. We want to use a system. Uh, we want to use a system that uh, that works without getting in our way. It, I don't turn on my computer and wonder, is it going to break? Now, some people, their entire life and hobby is exactly um, making sure that <laughs> they learn how to fix all this kind of stuff, see how the latest applications work, and that's great. There's entire job fields around that. So the great thing about having an Arch branch and a Debian branch, and uh, among others, is that we have more choice. I need system stability because I don't have spare time to throw into fixing something. So he and I agree completely. So what is his beef with Linux Mint? Listen to this. So when I boot into Linux Mint, the first thing I did is almost the first thing all of us do is fire up a browser, right? And I went there and I looked for TFIR obviously and I did not find that site at the first result on the first page. And then I looked at it and the search was Yahoo, which I'm guessing is powered by Bing. So like no worries, I'll just go and change the search engine. So when I went there in the Firefox, I did not find Google there. Because okay. Now, first and foremost, sir, Yahoo predates Bing by a good 20 years. It is its own search engine, okay? Yahoo is not powered by Bing. Bing is Microsoft, Google is Google, Yahoo is Yahoo. Yahoo predates Google. <laughs> they were just, they didn't figure out how to make it roll and live quite as long. So yes, the default is that Firefox happens to have a custom version. Um, they have a custom version of Firefox. Uh, Linux Mint has a custom version of Firefox. This is actually something that Joe Collins talked about in a video, Linux tip, install private Mozilla Firefox. Um, and Joe Collins, uh, this video here, which we're not going to do any of this, this is a 20 minute video. He talks about why he does not like that Linux Mint takes Firefox, prepackages it just with a few search customizations, maybe a few other minor things, and then ships that out with Linux Mint. So Joe Collins teaches you here how to install the real core Firefox. Um, as far as how to add other search engines, there's other ways around, but I did a video on this. Um, over a year, almost two years ago, a uh, year and a half ago at least, on how to add search engines to Linux Mint Firefox because they have indeed adjusted the, uh, the system. So both of these videos are also going to be linked in the description down below. 
All right. So that, though, is is uh, his entire premise is that he went to pull down the search function and there's no Google in there to select. And so he basically says that they're taking away our choices. But how to force users to use Yahoo and not Google? I think Linux Mint developers and I'm saying I think I don't know thought that hey, if Google is an option. Everybody will just switch to Google. So you know what? Let's just remove it. And if they don't find it, they will just get used to it and they will just use Yahoo. That is a user hostile approach. Okay. So he's asserting that the Linux Mint team has a user hostile approach because they're forcing you to use Yahoo rather than using Google, which they're not. And we're going to show you that from their own page. And of course, he spends a little bit of time as well talking about vendor lock, which is kind of important. So let's go ahead and see what he says about vendor lock. A, a proprietary approach, that's what proprietary companies do. They don't give choices. They lock you into a particular ecosystem or service that's called vendor locking. So that is why Linux Mint is doing, and that is why it's dangerous. Why is it dangerous? Because in this case, Yahoo was an option for Linux Mint to monetize from, so they removed the choice. Okay, so he says that Lin um, Linux Mint profits off of Yahoo, so they removed the choice to use Google. He says they are vendor locking. Now, I'm not going to play the rest of the video. Uh, I'll link it. You can go watch the rest of the video, see what he has to say. Um, but he spends the rest of the video saying, well, now they've removed the choice to use Google. What if they remove the choice to use LibreOffice? What if they remove the choice to use Firefox altogether? He basically says that Linux Mint is taking away your choices. And that is completely and totally farcical. All right. And I'm going to show you exactly why. So uh, just so I'm not showing you on my main system that I've been using for a while, so that you know there's no customizations, I just installed Linux Mint 19 onto a virtual box and I have not adjusted anything else uh, in here. And what we are going to do is I'm going to walk you through, uh, walk you through what the, the core issues happen to be. Okay, so here we are in a new Linux Mint 19. Um, I'll just show you down here, I just installed it. So we're still on our first setup mode. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna boot up Firefox, which is down here on the bottom. Now remember, his key points is there's no Google in the search function. Um, they're forcing people to use Yahoo and not Google, and this is creating vendor lock. Now of course, first and foremost, uh, Firefox itself has made it harder to change the search function. They got rid of our separate search bar. No big deal. It's just right down here in pre uh, preferences. And then once you get to your preferences, you just come over here and you hit your search. Now, this is uh, where you have the option to add the search bar or not add the search bar. You see the default search engine is Yahoo. Remember, they're forcing you to use Yahoo, not Google. Well, no, they give you a choice of Yahoo, Start Page, DuckDuckGo, Twitter, and Wikipedia. Um, which is fairly close to what stock uh, Firefox gives you, except stock Firefox gives you Google. Now, they did, Firefox did use Yahoo as their default until Yahoo was sold to Verizon, in which case they ended that contract and they went back to Google. So if you install Firefox at the time of this video, I believe that Google is the default with Yahoo, StartPage, DuckDuck, no, I, I don't even remember StartPage is an option. I think they have Google, Yahoo, DuckDuckGo, Twitter, Wikipedia, Ask, and maybe Dictionary. Um, I think that's what Firefox gives you. So they've gotten rid of the Ask and a few other ones. And they give you the option here for these particular ones. And then there's this little button down here. It says, find more search engines. Now on stock Firefox, this takes you to a different page. This is one of the custom modifications that Linux Mint did. It sends you instead to this page instead of the one to search for your basic uh, basic things. And then it tells you exactly why these are in, uh, included. Does Yahoo preserve privacy? It does not, but it does fund Linux Mint. Is it acceptable to accept some money from Yahoo, make it the default search engine if it keeps your project going and your lights on? 
Then, of course, DuckDuckGo funds and preserves privacy. They do have iXQuick and StartPage. These are actually the same company. Now, DuckDuckGo is kind of working on their same search algorithm. It seems fairly close to Bing, although I'm not sure if they're using anybody else. Yahoo is its own search engine. It doesn't pull in from Bing or anybody else. iXQuick and StartPage, this is the same company. These guys pull their results out of Google, but it does so in such a way that does not pass your user data to Google. That's what this system does. Then he talk about why these are included. Funding, privacy, and non-commercial. Okay. Uh, Wikipedia is a non-commercial um, issue. It doesn't fund them. It doesn't necessarily preserve privacy, but it's something a lot of people use, which is why it's included. Um, start page, iXQuick, DuckDuckGo, they're all good for privacy and they fund Linux Mint. Yahoo is my guess is they fund Linux Mint a lot, which is why they're the default search engine, even when um, stock Firefox is not. But they do, they are open that says this, they are not necessarily a privacy respecting. But they do give you all other privacy respecting search engines. So they talk about funding, they talk about privacy, they talk about what Linux Mint recommends. Donations and funding make it possible for Linux Mint to remain free and entirely focused on developing its operating system without engaging in commercial activities. Privacy is also an important aspect. It can be a deciding factor as well. Ultimately, this is your computer, hence they're not vendor locking anybody. It's your computer, and our purpose at Linux Mint is for you to enjoy using it. You decide whether you want to help fund our distribution, preserve your privacy, or prefer to run another engine. This page gives you information you need about search engines and how some of them are helping us, but it also makes it easy for add an alternative search engine you decide to do so. Other search engines. These engines do not share revenue with Linux Mint users, generate for them, and or do not preserve your privacy. Boom, Google. Click here to add it. Yes, now Google is in there. Now I missed the button to uh, make it my default, but if I go back into my preferences, whoa, holy moly, Google's now my, my default. Um, so no, this is a complete non-issue. They are not doing vendor lock. Uh, Linux Mint team is not doing vendor lock. They're not telling you not to use it. They're not removing the choice. They're not removing the option. They're simply putting it at the bottom. If you read the page, it's right there. Click the button, install Google, you got it. They're just saying, hey, before you go over to Google, think about it. Do you need Google or not? That's all he's saying. So uh, TFIR then walked down this very slippery slope. If you listen to the rest of the five minutes of the video, he goes through a very slippery slope where he says, they've removed your choice to use Google. So now they might remove your choice to use Firefox at all or LibreOffice or any other application. And therefore his overarching statement is that, um, is that Linux Mint is, is vendor locking. It's being anti-competitive. It is... Uh, it is only thinking about the money and, and it's only serving what is, meets its interests and not the interests of its users. If you actually look at the information Linux Mint gives you, none of that is true at all. Google is right there. It's an option. You click on the logo, you hit the add button, and you even have the option to make it your default. I skipped that step, but you have that option. Okay, so no, this, uh, this uh, what, uh, uh, why he doesn't recommend Linux Mint. Uh, it, it's completely farcical. So I would not put any stock in that particular video. I did not watch his full Linux Mint review. I didn't get a chance to watch that. So I don't know what else he says about that, but this is the one thing that he had a separate issue on. So thank you for watching and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux Mint.